all life's going to bring even to this day. We have yet to know what the next hour or the next second is going to bring. So when we talk about period, it really is a matter of day by day, situation by situation, change by change, with the Bible us from faith to faith. Really believing that, you know what? I'm in the category of those who have given their entire life over to the administration of the Spirit of God. And when we do that, it's intended that it brings a certain sense of calm, a certain sense of confidence, and calm and confidence are empowering tools to deal with things we cannot control. The calm comes from the peace of God that passes what? So in all your ways, you understand it, but you got to understand sometimes the peace of God is going to pass understanding. <laughs> That's an understanding. Right. We don't think of that as an understanding because in our finite mind to understand means we need an explanation. That's how my mind works sometimes. How about yours? My mind says, look, well, if all I get, I'm beginning to understand it. Explain this to me, Lord, because I don't understand it. Then he lets you know, well, let me explain something to you. I give you a piece that passes and I'm just saying, <laughs> shut it up in your face. Don't you? Okay, Lord, got it. A little late, but better late than never. Because you know what? A part of that change is not being in, I gotta go back to it, not being in control. And brother, well, the brothers are here, but sisters, being in control for most people is more important sometimes than peace. And calm, and, uh, and, and because we tend to feel like I can, and I'm the guiltiest of all. How many times have I told you that I can do the good if you just make it make sense? <laughs> now maybe none of y'all are crazy enough to tell us, <laughs> but I have. <laughs> if it makes more sense, I can cope with it. Lord, let me know that's my job. Trust me. Another way of looking at fear him is to trust him. Because it's not a fear of intimidation. It's not a fear of frightened. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an attitude of awe. An attitude of, wow, look how awesome and great God really is. It's, 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 a, it's an attitude of utmost respect. You see, that's the challenge. How much we respect God says a lot, too, about how we will cope with change in past our lives. I learned sometimes my respect for him was not quite where it should be. Now I have I have a reputation of being very honest. And sometimes I'll say to people things they don't have the courage to say, but your actions say. My actions and my words said that my feeling is he wasn't stepping up to the table to handle things that were impacting my life with change to my satisfaction. And you feel the same way sometimes. Some of us may have matured more from it than others. And praise God that you reached to that level. I'm getting better and better and learning to say, you know what, Lord? And I've gotten a whole lot better at it. Thank you, Jesus. Because I'm going to be honest with you, when I didn't operate under the... In, under the understanding that God really has it, I stay stressed. Right. And what the changes that will do, what change will do to your life, it'll kill you. It can kill you physically, but even more so, you know what the enemy's goal is? To kill you spiritually. Right. I have a friend of mine right now, her husband died, and she's been calling me a lot, asking me how to cope with it, how to minister. Strong woman of God, preacher. But you know what? This is knocking her a off her feet. It's, it's, it's shaking her faith. It's shaking her attitude. She says, how long am I going to be mad at God? She says, sometimes I don't even feel like talking to him. Been there. I told her, I said, you know something? Whatever you do, when you feel like that, and you tell the Lord that, tell him, please forgive me and help me get past this so that I can get to the place where I can come to accept that you are the one that makes all the decisions about my life and everybody else's life, and I can't control it. I have to accept the fact that you are the authority, the only authority, the principal authority, the chief authority, and come to realize that the eyes of the Lord are upon them that fear him. And see, what happens is, 
That's why I use that one about grief, because that's one of the ones that have the deepest impact on a lot of people. And grief is not just about losing a loved one. You can have the grief of losing a job, the grief of losing a home, the grief of losing a child, the grief of losing a parent. The grief. There's a lot of losses that we experience right. in life that cause us to grieve, and it grieves to the point that we blame that for the change in our attitude. And that change doesn't please God. It's an attitude that works against the Spirit of God and not in conjunction with the Spirit of God. I'm going to tell you the truth. I haven't stopped thanking God to this day for his tolerance of my intolerance wow. of the change that he brought in my life. Because I was intolerant of it. And I, I spoke against it. And I was, and I, I, I would just, because you know what my attitude was? Ain't no point me pretending with God I'm feeling okay. He ain't blind. He ain't down. He ain't stupid. He can read my heart. And I can sit there and say, oh, Lord, your will be done. And all the time he knows I'm just upset as I can be. <laughs> who am I fooling? And who am I hurting? Myself. Because God knows the truth. And the truth is, I ain't getting with the program. No matter what. I have a, I, Sister Jones, I'm dealing with some challenges with my own son. I thank God I'm not, I was at one time holding a little attitude to God because my child has a uh, disability. So why would you give us a child that has this kind of disability? Why am I going to be a parent for the rest of my life? Having to raise and raise and raise and raise a child because he can't handle his own life. But you know what? I've come to the conclusion God thought that I could handle it and gave right, me that right, response right. because he saw that there was something he wanted to develop in me right. and bring out of me because he's developing his spirit in me. Amen. So you know what? I'm going to tell you something. The biggest thing that change does, like I said before, it develops the fruit of the spirit in our life, which brings us into an assemblance of a resemblance rather of looking more like Jesus. We, we say so many things and we do so many things and we say so many things. I want to be more like you, Jesus. I want to be more like you. I want to be the vessel you work through. I want to be more like you. Do you? <laughs> Because you know what? He's going to see it too. <laughs> sure. Sure. So when you get through saying it, when you get through talking it, hey, he says, I just want to be more like the Lord. <laughs> Did you really know that you just bit into the fruit of the Spirit and you took a sizable chunk and now you're gagging on it? <laughs> Because when he actually sets out to bring it into action, how I don't know why I go through all that, Lord. Why don't when you go forward? <laughs> and the celebration dies. <laughs> when we get back on Sunday again, hey, to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, honor my mom, to be like him. All through life's journey, whoa, whoa. all through life's journey, whoa, whoa. are you sure? All through life's journey, from earth to glory, I only ask to be like him. Whoa, whoa. You are, see, you know what? When you sing that song, you know what you're singing? You're celebrating change. <laughs> Change my heart, oh Lord, make me ever new. Change my heart, God, we're just in places up here. But well, we sing these songs, don't we? Then when he starts to do it, Lord, and most of the people go fasting and praying, Lord, take this away now. Fix their attitude right now. I don't know what's going on with my boss. I don't know what's going on with my husband. I don't know what's going on with these kids. I don't know what's going on with my mother-in-law. I don't know what's going on with my... Oh, we... Okay, <laughs> you said <laughs> all through life's. <laughs> oh, Lord, the Lord tells us to sing with an understanding. <laughs> I bet you just saw a good reason why you need to understand what you're saying. Do you know something? The greatest illustration.
illustration that just popped into my spirit. Remember when Jesus was with the disciples right before he was going to face his crucifixion and James and John and they were sitting there arguing, they come up to Jesus, you know Jesus, uh, we got something, I'm, I'm paraphrasing it, we got something we're gonna present to you and we want you to do it. Uh, can one of us turn your right hand and one of us turn your left hand you come into the kingdom? Mm -hmm. And, and Jesus said, what they were saying is, is that we want you to empower us to be at the chief seats. Because yeah. right. we know you're at the head. Right. We want to be sitting next to the head. Right. And he says to them, God, tell you what, can you drink of the cup I'm going to drink? Right. You know what he was saying to them? Are you willing to suffer and go through many, many changes? Right. Are you willing to celebrate the changes that you're going to have to go through in your life to be in my kingdom? And then he says to me, he says to them, well, you will anyway. Right. <laughs> Again, that's just part of your lot. Right. Now, to sit on the right now, that's not for me to give. That's up to the Father. But what I will tell you, oh, you will drink of this cup. Right. Now, let me just say something to you. In case you didn't stop to realize, that conversation was written about them, but it's applicable to all of us. We have to drink the same cup. Well, the cup requires change. When the Lord said that he changed our heart and took the heart of stone and gave us the heart of flesh, what he's saying is, I did a spiritual surgical procedure and took away the carnal mindset that was dominating and controlling. Now, he didn't remove it 100%. What he did is he transferred the that it had over your life and put the power over the new heart that he gave us, which is the heart and mind of Jesus Christ. See, the heart and mind of Christ now are, 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 is working in our hearts to make us now recognize that we must conform to whatever he puts us through in order to make us like he wants us to be. I didn't know if this class was even going to come up, and prior to me even doing this, I have been sitting at home thinking about myself. I don't know about y'all. Sit down and I look at me. And sometimes when I see some of the things I do and how I, I get very disappointed with myself. Because I go, why did you do that? Why didn't you just act differently? Why didn't you just shut your mouth? <laughs> or why didn't you just take the low road? There's different things. You know how you see how you operate. You're like, and you tell yourself, the next time I'm not going to do it. Right. <laughs> and you do it again. Yes. Yeah. And God keeps giving you the opportunity to change. And I said, you know, I said, you know, Lord, I've got to do this right. It's not that I'm out here doing anything crazy. It's just this internal personality that's got kinks and, and ugliness in it in ways that don't please God. And so, and then the Lord dropped my heart. He said, way before. He says, let me send something to you. He says, if you want to really celebrate your life, you have to celebrate the changes that I bring about to make you more like me. Enjoy the fact that I love you so much, I'm going to change you. Amen. 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 Yes. Because let's be real. We're not that great the way that we are. Amen. Amen. We're just no, not. No, we're not. And even those of us who are doing maybe in our mind better than somebody else, Watch that. That's right. Because too much of that can get you in trouble. That's right. You better always recognize that, you know, Lord, as long as I'm on this earth and you're working on me, that means I haven't arrived. That's right. I'm yeah. still being changed. Absolutely. And made over again. And I'm going to tell you something. You know what? The grace of God, that scripture says, upon them that hope in his mercy. The times get away from now and take too much time here. Mercy. The mercy of God in the Old Testament is synonymous to the grace in the New Testament in a lot of ways. So he says that his eyes upon them that fear him and upon them that hope. We have a confidence in the grace and mercy of God. We are proof positive that God's grace and mercy exists. Amen. You know why? Because we've been recipients of salvation through Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the grace of God that's been administered to the world. And those of us who have been accepted it and embraced salvation, we are living testimonies that the grace of God is our sustainer. When life comes, and life does, to bring about change, and it will, 
We can celebrate the change instead of becoming frustrated because we recognize that we're living in the grace of God. Not abusively, not misusing it, not taking the attitude that, well, he's, that comment that I hear so often in the church disturbs me. But God knows my heart. He knows I'm doing my job. You know what? I scringe when I hear saints say that. Because you know what? Yes, he does. He knows your heart. And because he's destined you for something better than what your heart's put down right now, he's expecting you to step up That's to the right. change. Amen. Amen. So don't tell me that what he's, oh, I, this is one. Well, until God changes my attitude, excuse me? Mm -hmm. You have to pray for me because I'm not there yet. God has to change my attitude. No, God already empowered you to change the right. way the Holy Ghost. That's right. Now, what you're telling me is that I refuse to change. Right. And you're going to put it on God that he has to come around now and bully his way through your heart. And, and almost like a, <laughs> when I was living in Texas, I would take people that would come to visit us to downtown Texas to go see some of the um, farming activities. And they would have those um, shows where they would lasso the, the bulls and all that kind of stuff. And, and they would say, oh, wow. And they would take that rope and grab them by the, by the neck. And then they would do some other things that I really didn't know they were doing to <laughs> handle the bulls. And, and they were basically abusing them to, to, to control. God is not going to handle He's not going to bull handle you. Amen. Now, without you knowing what I mean, <laughs> you have to know what they do to the bulls to know what I'm really saying. Yeah. Did anybody... Does anyone not know what I'm talking about? So you guys kind of know what I'm They actually handle the bull's physical organs and squeeze them and make them willing to pay a buck to control them so that they can um, hack, uh, tackle them. That's painful. That's cruel. Why don't you tell me that God's got to change? What you're saying is you got a bull handle me. That's my way of putting it. So in other words, you're telling God that unless you, unless you, you uh, take me bucking, because that's all you're going to get. Right. You, I mean, I'm not being too graphic. I hope I'm not. No. But I want to be very vividly clear. Right. So that when you look at yourself, you can know the difference between when you're embellying a celebrated part of, of, of change or when you're actually just bucking. Uh -huh. right. And sometimes we're just plain old deliberately bucking. Because it just isn't going my way. And, and, and God's like, I don't, I, he will let you buck to you, but now he's not going to touch you. you know, he's going to let you do wear, wear yourself out. That's right. When he tell Paul, you can't buck against the prince. In other words, keep on till you just have had enough. Yeah. And when you just out there pass out from exhaustion, and you know what that means, though? That you will go through a lot of additional things. Mm -hmm. What you just now is you increased your change package <laughs> to become now, and you would have had to go through one or two things. You may increase it to ten times. Because you know why? He figures, okay, I don't have, because here's what's so, so fascinating about God. God doesn't have to do anything. He knows that there's enough in life that's just like, by the way, the cycle of life is going to make you change. And you're going to get in and not know because the Lord, next time I won't be so difficult. Right, <laughs> right. Yes. Because you know, it wasn't worth all that. Amen. Amen. Wow. In, <laughs> in Psalms 3, 15, he says, he fashioned their hearts alike. He considered all their words. Our God takes the time to design our hearts. And then compose, and then that composition, he's also fully, fully, he, that's the thing that blows my mind. He's so knowledgeable about me and you. He literally already knows everything that we're going to do to buck him. He's already put that into the equation. He knows that we're not going to buck him, that we're going to cooperate. It just doesn't that blow your mind. Yeah. It blows my mind. Because yeah. you know why it blows my mind? Because he still saved us. He saved us already knowing the equation and all the inputs in it that will reach to the destination of what he's promised to do. I'm going to show you what the promise is in a minute. He says, listen, I fashion all of your hearts. I create every soul. There's not a soul created that God did not put into the earth. 
those living and those passed on. He has designed them and in his mind they were all existing even before time. He already has predestined what we're going to accomplish and what we're going to do. Not from the standpoint that he has said, this is as far as you're going to go, but predestined from the standpoint he's made, he already knows these things. Yeah. It's not predestined because he's picked them, but it's predestined because by him being the one that knows all things from the beginning to the end, he knows the outcome. So when you talk about predestined, it's not pre-chosen, but it's, it built, it's built into the foreknowledge of God. And that's a complex issue for some of us because we think God picks and chooses who's going to be saved. If that was the case, then he would have died for the whole world. Amen. Amen? Amen. He did not pick and choose, but he pre-knows, so therefore it is predestined. You got that? So when he says, listen, I considered all their works. In other words, he knew all the evil you were going to do. He knew every time you were going to lose it, every time you were going to say the wrong thing, every time you were going to do the right thing, every time you were going to have the right response. He fully has all the... You talk about a computer knowing everything. God is more profound than the largest database in the world. Because he has calculated and known everything that all human beings were going to do on the face of the earth from the time of the first created man to the very last person that's going to be born. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That's why we can fear him, because there's nothing that gets past his knowledge. He considered all their words. There are no secrets between you and God. Because he's already taken it into account. Yeah. So when you think about it, and I'm going to draw to a close because my time is just about up at this point. Philippians 1 6 says this. You all know the scripture very well. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in, in you, maybe individualized, right. in you, right. you, 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 will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And you know what that means? If he's already calculated everything that you're going to do, because he created your heart, he's considered all the works that your heart's going to produce. Ooh-wee. And that, that just blows me away. Because that means I'm, I'm going to be 60 July 29th. Everything I've already done, he already knew. And everything I'm going, I'm going to do, he already knows. I don't know it, but he knows it. And that applies to you too. That's right. He says, I considered it all already. Then he turns around, brings us into the salvation plan, gives us his spirit, and then makes this profound proclamation that I started something in you. And let me tell you something. When you and I made that promise of the Lord to take our heart, take over my life, fill me with your spirit, I want to belong to you, I want you to belong, I want us to be connected. He took that commitment.